Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, blogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, vlogs such as 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, Audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podomatic, Spotify, Mixcloud and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk revolution on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and our official website www.pitch-talk.com The pitch is where we eat The pitch is where we sleep And the pitch is where we talk Welcome to Coaching with JBK so welcome back welcome back i'm still here i'm still here it's jbk yours truly and this time this is a north london derby special and there is a reason why this is a north london derby special one i support one of the teams and two i was at the game so more importantly the second reason is the reason why there is a derby special but it's ironic that we had a few derbies all over the weekend, especially with Crystal Palace chart and Athletic. We also had, which is one of the games that I didn't actually mention as well, three two to um, to chart no, to Crystal Palace um, today. We also had the Birmingham City Aston Villa game, which ended with Aston Villa winning one nil, and we also had the North London derby, which was yesterday. Now. In the contents, the context of the FA Cup final, based on the game that happened in the Champions League between Chelsea and their opponents and Arsenal and their opponents, Chelsea had the better result. No two ways about it, Chelsea had the better result. They won 7-0, Arsenal won 5-1. With that, and with that being said, we also had... The weekend results, Manchester City losing to Chelsea 4-0. So Chelsea have scored 11 goals in two games over this, over this whole week. If you, con- if you consider last week's game as well against Aston Villa, then they've scored 12 goals and conceded none. Arsenal have now conceded two and have only scored six goals. Massive difference in, in the sense of the FA Cup final. And leading up to the FA Cup final, Chelsea are on a rampage. Since they lost to Arsenal at the start of the season, they haven't really conceded any goals. Um, And on top of that, with Arsenal dropping points this weekend, it means that they go top of the table, which is, of course, as a lot of people say, advantage Chelsea. So it now means that Arsenal are playing catch-up. And it also means that Arsenal now have to find and source those results as best as they can to stay ahead of the curve come December 5th and that's a big massive big massive deal for the FA Cup final the FA Cup final which proudly I'm going to be at I have no idea where my ticket is and what side it's going to be on but it'll be nice to see a game played between a defining era of clubs a massive defining era of clubs now talking about the FA Cup Manchester City have won it Basically, over the past two or three seasons. Before that, it was Chelsea that won it. So, with Arsenal having won it years gone by, it will be interesting to see who wins it this time, which will either define an error or start a new one. That's the reality of this. And with Chelsea basically able to win the quadruple and wrap up every trophy that they've won domestically. I think it's the quadruple or the treble, one of the two. But they won the the Conti Cup, which was last season, ironically against Arsenal. They won the WSL, ironically with this season finishing the way it did. And, well, with the season finishing with no fans, they managed to win win that with two points to spare against Manchester City. with Manchester City in the in the echelons of where they could have been. And they've now got a chance to wrap up the FA Cup from last season. So yeah, the treble. They could have had a four they could have had a fourth with the Champions League, but 
Barcelona really did show them the way the way to play. Um, on top of this, on top of this, you've now got the WSL results being the way that they have been, has shown that <clears throat> the women's game and the WSL itself has become an attraction. And the reason why it's become an attraction is because you're getting these type of results that you want to see week in, week out, not a 5 6 7 nil to the top four, the so-called top four. You want to see games that are very close because you then know there is a trophy at, at stake, there is a position at stake, and there is also a game to be watched. In, in the midst of all of that, there is a game to be watched. So, with the WSL seeing that this game was a draw, wow, it's not easy. It isn't easy. And for Spurs, they've really shown that they've improved. Not just as a competitive team, but shown that they can take points off of the top teams. The so-called top four. They've taken a point off of Manchester United. They've taken three points away from Manchester City. They've now taken a point off of Arsenal, their closest rivals. And now all of us are, well, locational rivals, as we say. Um, but now they've got to do the same thing to Chelsea. And then that's when we will see which, where Spurs really are. Not if they can beat Everton, West Ham, any of the teams that they were in an amount in the round mixed with last season. It's whether they can actually go and beat or get a draw from a team like Chelsea. That's the reality. Can they do it? And if so, can they do it with the same squad? They're in a good vein of form at the moment. A lot of things are going well for, for Spurs. Rian Skinner has really put the work in just to make sure that this is working for her club. And it's and it's amazing. It's amazing what she's done. Um, going forward, we are now going to be talking about what the North London derby was like for the fans. Massive, massive achievement for everybody that went to the game. Two, over 2,000 fans at the game. Massive. And that's brilliant for a fight for just a, a, a normal league game in the women's in the WSL. That's massive. Not just for the for the North London Derby, but for the WSL itself. Setting a record at uh, London B Stadium. At the Hive, it should be called, sorry. For a Spurs WSL game. Brilliant. And it was amazing to watch. We had so much going on. Lot of a lot of fans, both young and old, um, there, and everybody just enjoying the atmosphere, enjoying the game that went that was played in front of them. Obviously, it was at, on BBC Sport as well, and it was a great spectacle to see two teams really fighting for what was considered maybe three points on the board, and it was real. It was real. It was an intense North London derby, not like it used to be where Arsenal would have won ten nil. Or they would have won 5 0 as they did a few weeks back um, in the FA Cup quarter final. No, this was Tottenham have learnt from their mistakes and they found ways just to actually make sure that Arsenal don't have the same freedom as they normally would in positions where they are dangerous. Um, and it was good. It was good to see and it was brilliant to, to watch. Um, and for a fan, you would. Pretty much say that was the game that I can go and understand women's football a little bit more. The passion, the thrive, the everybody going for it, the real the realness of of a of a football match. That was the game that you go, okay, I can watch this a little bit more. Um, so if you wasn't watching it, then by all means find it on the BBC i i player, and just try and watch the game from start to finish because it was an amazing match. It was an amazing match. Um, moving forward, moving forward, we talk about the game itself. Feisty affair. It was very feisty. And the way that I say this, it was feisty in a sense of you could, you could see that this was a North London derby and it wasn't just any ordinary North London derby. It was one where Spurs needed to be very resilient, needed to put their body on the line, and their bodies on the line for any result. Um, and they did that. They made sure that Arsenal were just passing the ball. 
going from side to side, not necessarily going through, finding their their passes, but not necessarily penetrating to to actually go and score. That's that's where it really was was the conversation that the Arsenal kind of failed on, and it was only until we got to the the second half that you started to see spaces opening up. The Arsenal still were clinging onto the ball, but then you started to see the little frustrations coming out of Arsenal. You start to see the players that normally would have scored by now no longer are scoring. And over the past few games, from what I've noticed, Arsenal's had most of their goals scored in the second half. So if I'm Chelsea, I'm looking forward to that. But if I'm an Arsenal fan, and I am, I'm now looking at that and going, well... Why couldn't we have scored in the first half with something a little bit different and maybe a little bit more switched on by seeing the the, the the chances coming? And it's not always easy. Having a game that morning with the same sort of half chances that we had or full chances that we had, it is frustrating as a coach. But they were there. They were there, didn't take them. Spurs did well to hang in. And then they came back in the second half Got their goal, very scrappy, right in front of me. Um, as I was sitting behind the goal that they scored in, right in front of me. And you're going, wow, how? Where did that come from? And they could have got a second within five minutes. Neville put um, blazing over the bar. Didn't expect the ball to come to her. And, and she's just gone and blazed over from, an, uh, from about, I think, eight yards. But I don't think she expected the ball. And it just kind of hit, it just kind of went for it. Um, and then Vivian Miedemard managing to get the goal in, this, in the final final minutes. And it was all square. And it was kind of like, okay, well, there's a few yellow cards been handed out here. There's a few fouls going in. There's a few injuries going in. And you can see what, you can see that Spurs weren't playing for the physical game. It was just, that's, because they were defending so much, they're putting their bodies on the line. It wasn't because they were physical. It was just the fact that they learnt that you need to kind of allow Arsenal to have the ball. Be in a in a mindful block, um, whether it be the mid or low block, defending the, the width of the area. Or just making sure that you get two players to to the wings and stopping Arsenal from, from crossing the ball. And that's, that's basically what they did. Um, anything that was going through, they made sure that they got in and around the, the ball. And if it went over, it was a case of we could header it away as soon as possible because it was just there for us to do so. They started getting into it and they started to make sure that they could break away where the spaces were being left by the wingers. And they were breaking through, either through or to the side. And the big moment that changed everything was a little bit of skill. A little bit of skill from Graham, I believe it was, um, who just allowed the ball to to basically bounce on her head, essentially. That's what it was. She just allowed the ball to bounce on her head and then all of a sudden she turned it and then Arsenal now have a, le- a lot less of the ball. The ascendancy was all with with, with them. Going into the final, f- final few minutes... Then Arsenal didn't, well, final few seconds of the game, Arsenal had a free kick. Excuse me. Arsenal had a free kick. And instead of putting it into the box, they did what they normally do, which is play it round the back just to try and move the opposition. Didn't need to. The goal that they got was exactly the goal that they should have had in the first half. Beth Mead had a chance. Ball hit the bit, hit the bottom of the cross, bottom of the crossbar, and the inside of the post, and went across the line, and went came out. Again, Katie McCabe in front of me had a shot, pinged off the bar. Obviously, those are chances that you can say, "Wow, if you'd taken those, then maybe a different different story." But at the same time, you know what? It happens. It happens. Um, it's just one of those games where you just you just hope for the best. You just hope for the best, um, and it's and it's tough, but with the players coming through um, that we do have at the moment at Arsenal with Irabuchi, 
not being uh, not being a st- um, on a starting position. You have Viv not always starting games, but is being managed, and that's the reason behind her not always starting or possibly sitting on the bench for or possibly missing out on on games. She's being managed just simply because Euro twenty twenty two is coming. Um, you just know there's the the teams that the players haven't had the, their rest as best as possible. A lot of them went to the Olympics, and they haven't had the time to prepare like Spurs or like Manchester United or like Brighton just to kind of will will allow you to to have a bit of a breather. Some of the t- some of the players who were at the Olympics, who play for clubs that are not from Chelsea, Arsenal, or any of the so-called top three, either don't have an injury or had time to break, um, had time fr- um, from the game to rest. That was the difference. Arsenal have a few of those players, and I'm not going to make an excuse, considering this type of... Uh, it might sound like an excuse, but it isn't, because this is what you have to do with players. Sometimes you have to manage them in a different way. You can't have them start in every game, um, because sometimes it does build an atmosphere where it's elitist, Whereas really and truly, you've got players who you want to play week in, week out, but you can't because you need to manage them a little bit more. Um, and not just them playing time, but also their emotions and also their thoughts and feelings around, is this a team sport or just a me sport? That's that's the reality um, as a coach. So, look. The North London derby was amazing and there will be one more picture that I'll put up, maybe another video that goes up on on Twitter from myself, from JBK. But ultimately, what a game it was to be at. What a pleasure to be at as well. And I would definitely recommend anybody looking to go to games to go. Doesn't matter what game you go to, whether it's the championship or whether it's the um, WSL, whether it's grassroots, just go, just have a, have a, if you get a chance to go, then go, because it was one of the best experiences that I've had um, going forward, and it gave me a chance to watch a game for the first time for, for, in a long time um, in the WSL. My last game, Arsenal won that by one goal to nil against Manchester City, which was the day that they were picking up the trophy. That's how long ago it was. So I'm glad that I might finally managed to get to a WSL game. So, yours truly is signing off with a North London Derby special. I've been JBK. You've been the, the audience. I hope we're both having a great week coming up. Peace. Join the Pitch Talk revolution. Check out the official Pitch Talk website. www.pitch-talk.com 